What is the best viewing order of oh, the man. Star Wars movies? Dang. This is getting more complicated the more we talk about it. I can feel the controversy bubbling. Uh, who is the chosen one? What's the most controversial thing on the internet currently surrounding Star Wars? I'll answer it. Ask me anything. We are live. 99 Nerds, episode 12. What are we even talking about, David? <laughs> this is it. We're done. <laughs> episode 12, we're done. No. We did everything we wanted to. Uh, no, I've got some ideas that I'm uh, excited to share with you guys. Are you gonna? I'm gonna. Sick. Yeah, so I had this idea. We were all talking. What are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? Kenobi's over. Do we just wrap it up? Pack it up. Do we just never do this again? Um, no. I came up with a topic, and they did not know about this topic until right now, as I'm about to say it. We have no idea what he's going to say. This is very organic. I wanted to talk to you guys today about the most debatable Star Wars topics on the internet right now. Uh-oh. Starting oh, by the way, Sean's here too. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Side note, everybody in the world saw my reel for Ned B, RIP in peace, and we tagged the actor who played Ned B. He's a six foot eight dude who fills that suit Is well. Is he really that tall? Yeah, he's six foot eight. Gosh, that's got to be awful. And uh, he shared our reel. Ned B himself knows about 99 Nerds. Man himself. So he's going to talk to Deborah. Deborah's going to talk to Ewan. Ewan's going to talk to George. And then George will be sitting down talking to you, Sean. That's how this all works. Aww. It's just this first domino has fallen. Dang. I can't wait for the rest. Just like uh, when they decided that. You ever start a sentence and hope to find it? <laughs> <laughs> Dead serious. <laughs> Half of the sentences I say, I like that now. <laughs> Maybe 70%. Yeah. Well, either way, um, it's all coming together. Yeah. It's all coming together. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all coming together. So, n number one, first and foremost, I wanted to ask you guys, what is the best viewing order of oh, the man. Star Wars movies? So, uh, you want to start off? Sure. Because you actually got to... Show your kids. Kind of. I started. I started actually two different ways. So my wife wanted to watch them, and she had seen bits and pieces. She had seen this one, but not that one. Um, so with her, we started with Phantom Menace, and I started watching it with her first. So we, we started one through six. We actually haven't even made it through yet. But Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> started with number one. And then as we were doing it, I realized that with my son, Oliver, who is five now, he's getting into him. Um, I wanted to start with him with number four. So we watched four and five. Five was pretty intense for him. He's only five years old. And the Vader versus Like Luke. a fire at the circus. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. Intense. It, if Luke versus Vader for him was a little too much to handle. So we didn't watch six yet with him. Do you think he personally kind of took it like seriously that it was like a conflict of a f son fighting a father? He just I, couldn't get through that? I would say so. Okay. At first he walked away from it saying, I did not like that movie. Oh my gosh. But what? after after a couple of days of him processing it, he said he really liked it. So uh, right. I, I think... Nice, sa nice save there, kid. I think starting with A New Hope is my personal opinion. Yeah. What it gets murky then is where do you watch Rogue One? Right. Because I think Rogue One is super instrumental to the whole series. Like if you're just talking strictly one through nine, um, I would say start with four, four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Which if you've never watched Star Wars, all of this sounds so ridiculous. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it is. What do you think, Dave? I agree. I think Rogue One kind of throws things off. Because you want... You want them to see that overlay of, like, Princess Leia gets the plans. Right. And then, boom, right into her getting the plans into R2. Right. It's like, 
you have to break that transition up somewhere. Whether you watch four, five, six, go back and mm -hmm. watch one, two, three, Rogue One and hope the person that's watching it for the first time connects the dots of Leia just got those plans. Right. Um, like with Emily, what I did is we watched four, five, six, one, two, three, Rogue One, uh, 79. And actually, whoa, you skipped solo. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. We didn't even watch it. <laughs> wow. That's messed up. Dang. No, but, uh, did Mom, you watch the Clone Wars movie? No, not yet. We skip the Clone Wars is a lot. It's like 120 episodes. No, but the movie. Yeah, the movie. Plus the movie. Little baby, what was uh, Jawa the Hutt's son's name? S Stinky? Oh, <laughs> or, uh, uh, what is it? Smelly the Hutt. Stink butt. Stink butt, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember. Nobody remembers. That's the point. Don't you <laughs> see? You don't have to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, that movie is yeah, pretty rough. Not really. Um, I'm kind of with uh, Austin. I think, uh, I think the thing about Star Wars is like there's... It, there's, it's like Santa Claus. Why lie to your kids? Sure. You know, why tell them a lie? The way I see it, it's, you, should, um, you should just show people the movies in release order. Because mm -hmm. you want them to kind of get, be in the loop of, hey, these were not released chrono chronologically. And all these in-between stories, you know, they, they took place over time. Yeah. And they were like tucked in throughout what is, history. What's release order? Four, five, six. Um, obviously the two Ewok movies, right? Uh, the, ho the holiday special, then one, two, three, and then, uh, the Clone Wars movie, I guess, if you really need to go down that dark path. Um, and then, yeah, then you get the sequel trilogy and it's in between films, right? Didn't, uh, Rogue One come out after? It came seven? out after Force Awakens. It was yeah. 2016. But yeah, I would say watch that before Force Awakens. I Really? Yeah. Oh, eh, you know, maybe you might have a good point there. Sure. Because it's separate enough. My whole mindset is like there are scenes that hit so hard in the prequels. Okay. That were specifically shot in a way to hit hard emotionally because you know the implications of what's happening. Sure. You know the implications of what's going to happen in 4, 5, 6. And that's why certain aspects, especially Anakin's whole arc in episode 3, you appreciate the way they tie it all together mm -hmm. way more when you know where this is all headed. Sure. Same thing with Rogue One. I mean, when you know how it all leads into episode four, Vader in a hallway, the plans getting to Leia, that has so much more emotion and so you're so much more invested yeah. in it. And then it, it, as opposed to like if you started watching the sequel trilogy, you kind of have to like separate yourself and put yourself in a different space for a little while. Yeah. Sure. I mean, they directed it with the mindset of the audience knows where this is going, so we need to bridge the gap. So where should Solo fit in? Don't should even watch it. You well, it's not worthless. It's, I mean, it's to not, be fair. It's not worthless, but I don't think it has enough weight to it where it even matters when you watch it. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. Throw it in whenever. Yeah. It's um, like it's like Taco Bell. You enjoy it for a little while, but then you, it's your body just basically gets rid of it immediately. Total side note, you just brought up Taco Bell. Taco Bell and Cheez-Its apparently have a collab. Apparently. <laughs> apparently two different items, Cheez-Its and Taco Bell, is collabing on. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so we might get a crunch wrap with a giant Cheez-It in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Not since the Doritos taco has science gone too far. I think it has. <laughs> All right, I didn't know. I didn't know that the uh, release, uh, the movie order was the watch order was that controversial. Yeah, I think uh, that's the movie order we just went over. Sure. But my all-time Star Wars watch order would be four, five, six, one, two, Clone Wars movie, mm -hmm. Clone Wars animated show. Dang. Episode three. Bad Batch. <laughs> Kenobi. Okay, we forgot about Bad Batch. Yeah. Rebels. Rogue One. Mandalorian seasons one through two. Dang. Uh-oh. Book of Boba Fett. Seven through nine. This guy's putting together a master list. <laughs> so you want it you want you want the grand finale to be seven, eight, nine for somebody? Yes. And notice I didn't say solo in that. Dang. Wow. Or uh, it out. Or the, you included the Clone Wars movie, but you left out Solo. 
I think Clone Wars movie is better than Solo. I, I would lo- I would be interested left, to look up. He left Rebels in there too. I would be interested to look up how much money they spent on the Clone Wars movie versus how much money was spent making the Solo movie. Solo was expensive because they basically shot the movie twice. Shoot. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. There was uh well they originally hired the uh, Lord and Miller guys who did like 21 and 22 Jump Street and they also did the Lego movie. Mm. And my understanding is they basically Produced 80% of the film, and Lucasfilm saw it and said, this is not at all what we want. This is, the tone's all wrong. This is not on brand. Mm -hmm. So they fired the guys, and they brought in your boy Ron Howard. That's my boy. And uh, he basically had to redo the entire, they had to redo the entire movie, more or less. Shoot. Um, Well, really, he's not my boy, but his daughter is my boy. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Uh, yeah, Bryce. No, he narrates uh, Arrested Development. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's true. Arrested Development is goaded. I mean, one of the top five best shows ever made. Arrested Development is a uniquely profound show in its humor. Yeah, it really is. It's- it is the dumbest humor <laughs> orchestrated in the most brilliant way. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Michael. <laughs> My illusions. <laughs> um, I was going to say, your order is like, it makes sense, but it's not really realistic simply for the fact that, like, retaining all of that in a sequential order is is nearly impossible. Like, just retaining all that information to go in that exact order is probably the most ideal way to do it, but, like, no human could sit through all that and remember what happens in Clone Wars Episode 2 moving into... I'm sorry. What happens in Attack of the Clones headed into Revenge of the Sith after watching 139 hours of Clone Wars footage. Oh, my God. Anime. Is, it, is that how long is that show? No, I think it's 120 episodes. I looked it up. And how I, long is each episode? Like 18 minutes? Yeah, probably. There was something about it where I think it was like 66 hours, which had... I'll have to look it up. I remember seeing something where the the number of hours had some meaning. I'll have to find that and tag it over my face right now. Something about the total time of Clone Wars. You better hope you can find it. <laughs> I'm sure Google will have the Googlers going. All right. What else is controversial, Dave? Uh, who is the chosen one? Anakin Skywalker. What do you think, Sean? Oh, man. That's a complicated one, isn't it? I mean, there's so many it could be. I literally just saw a video of George Lucas saying Anakin is the chosen one. So I think when you watch the actual movie in order, the story will become very clear that Anakin is the chosen one. You sure? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why there would be any... Uh, I don't know why... All jokes aside, I don't know why there would be any controversy. Like, let me, let me, let me make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> Anakin Skywalker is literally... Of a virgin birth, <laughs> right? Like, let's just let's just clarify. Is that. he though? Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's rumors. No. No, there doesn't need to be rumors <laughs> no. about that. Uh, let's get controversial. Well, no, I think in the comics it was. Uh, I, it might be legends now, but no, it's canon. Palpatine well, manipulated the Force to create Anakin. That is in the comic, but sounds like needlessly complicated. I do recall it being essentially explained as a dream sequence where it, they weren't saying like this is what happened it was just like a nightmare sequence kind of like in clone wars when yoda is having all those force projections of like what might happen and what's going to happen yeah um not it's not canon that it did happen it's canon that wh- whoever was having that dream sequence had that dream sequence essentially imagine trying to demystify the virgin birth archetype in a film. <laughs> oh no, Palpatine just manipulated the, the 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 force. Whatever, dude. That's stupid. <laughs> I like it. No, it's lame. Don't like it. I think it's Anakin though, the okay. chosen one. Yeah. Okay. But I like you now. Our what? boy Obi Wan thinks it's Luke. Oh. Because in Rebels, oh. Maul is dying after Ooh, their movie. poetic fight. Right, right. And he says, Tell me, is is he the chosen one? And he's talking about Luke, the person that Obi-Wan's protecting. Right. And Obi-Wan says, yes. How do you know he wasn't talking about like C-3PO or something? The Grant thing is Beru. though, I or would say, Owen Lars. I would say that those, what is, what is the Jedi view of the chosen one versus Maul's view of the chosen one? You refer to the one, the prophecy 
said would bring balance to the force. Right. You believe it's this boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so that's the Jedi Council view of the Chosen One. But Maul's view of just the Chosen One may be the guy to get revenge on Palpatine. Like, he just wants somebody to take out Palpatine because of how he treated him. That's why it's called Revenge of the Sith, not Revenge of the Chosen One. Shoot. Dang. And then it's Return of the Jedi, not Return of the Je- Chosen One. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. But then it's A New Hope. <gasps> wow. Dang. This is getting more complicated the more we talk about it. I can feel the controversy bubbling. What if we went through and explained all of the meanings of the movie names? Go. Episode one, Phantom Menace. What does that mean? See, I actually, like I said, I have this uh, something like a hundred page paper. It's not even like 10% done um, (laughs) on the Phantom Menace. And I would like to, I don't know why I'm holding the tape. I would like to argue that it's kind of significant that Palpatine is the Phantom Menace. But I don't think the movie actually does, at least how it's directed, a good job of making that clear. Sure. When you see Phantom Menace, you would assume it's Maul. Exactly. But re- yeah, once you know the whole story and the whole picture, Palpatine is. Right. And, and it might be because the name, The Phantom Menace, it just sounds cool. It's so Flash Gordon. Right. So Buck Rogers. And so John Stamos. It just, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't quite uh, land maybe the way it should have. Sure. Which sure, is sure. why my Attack of the Clones rewrite, moving on to Attack of the Clones, I had a slight rewrite in that idea for that movie that would have made it more. Attack of the Clones. Okay. Mm. Well, the Attack of the Clones is the Battle of Genosis. When Yoda shows up with the clones. That's when to, the Clone Wars starts. To save Obi-Wan and Anakin and Pemi. That is the Attack of the Clones. But, Sean, what is your rewrite? So my idea was you got Zam Wazel. Zam Wessel. Zam yeah. Wessel. So she hunter, is yeah. hired by Jango Fett to assassinate Padme, right? Who is hired by Count, Count Dooku. Dooku who was who is theoretically <laughs> hired by the Trade Federation? To, that's the only thing. That's one of the things about that movie that's kind of lame. It's like it's a classic detective noir. Okay, ooh, there's a murder mystery. Somebody's trying to kill a senator, and Obi Wan's got to put on his his trilby and fedora <laughs> and figure out what's going on, right? But then you have this problem of the movie doesn't really answer the question of who tried to have her killed right. at the you know the tail end of that thread. And you just kind of get the insinuation that, oh, it was Newt Gunray because he was really ticked off about how she humiliated him in the first movie. Right. Shoot her or something. Yeah. That- Shoot her or something. It's like super <laughs> lame. So, but anyway, my theory, my, not even a theory, my hypothesis that has to be tested. Mm-hmm. Instead of Zamwazel, it's a masked assassin. That they're chasing through the city and they mm-hmm. they go after. Just backstory: Sam Wazell is the shapeshifter, the changeling, changeling yeah. bounty hunter that sends the robot that sends the worms yeah, to kill. Exactly. Patrick. There's yeah, so, a great. So reel. not only did Palpatine hire Palpatine and the Trade Federation, right? It's yeah. fractals all the way down, right. Dave. There's a <laughs> great no, reel let's, explaining Let's break it. this down. Yeah. <laughs> so Palpatine slash Trade Federation. Yeah. Newt Gunray hire. Dooku, right, to take care of Padme. Pa- or uh, Dooku hires Django. Django. Right. Django hires Zam. Zam hires worms. Hires sends a probe. That's right, the probe. The probe <laughs> sends the worms. <laughs> oh my god! And then Anakin kills the worms. And then Obi Wan grabs the drone. Right. And kills the drone. He kills it, right? Uh, no, he no, he falls off of it because she shoots him. That's Zam, she yeah, shoots she the drone. Shoots Sam yeah. Wiesel kills the drone. Dang. Oh my gosh. So here's my idea. Um, instead of keep all that the same, except <laughs> Zam Wiesel is a masked figure. I'm sorry, Zam. It, it's it's got to be a male for this to work. They chase this guy through the whole Coruscant city exactly the same. F- sneak up on him in the bar. Uh, the the assassin's about to pull a fast one on Obi Wan, shoot him right in the back, but. <gasps> Arm gets cut off, <laughs> falls oh, to the ground, and then Ahmed Best is like, "What?" Because he's got that cameo, and then Anthony Daniels, he's like, "What? Yeah, yeah. What's going on?" Oh my gosh! Right, right. All right. So they get him outside. Jar three PO. They get him outside. Thank you. They drag him into the alleyway. They pull off his mask. It's Tamora Morrison. I was gonna say. Okay. 
the actor who plays. It is the guy who plays Django Fett. Right. And the dialogue is exactly the same. And they're saying to him, hey, who hired you? It's just a job. You know, that whole thing. <laughs> and Anakin gives a, like that passive aggressive, who hired you? Tell us. Tell us now. Toss out. You know, he freaks out at him. <laughs> and then he's like, it was a bounty on a name. And then the dart. It's exactly the same, except we don't know who this mysterious armored figure in the sky in a jetpack was, was who stopped the assassin from right. talking. So the murder begins. Right. Now, that's an easy change. <laughs> but there's one more change that is kind of more complicated, but I think is even more significant. So you got Obi-Wan. His storyline is following the clues. It's the, it's the detective thing. Right. And he gets to Camino. He's going to talk to the Caminoans and, and get to the bottom of this, okay? Right, right. And then, meanwhile, Padme and Anakin are on Naboo. Right. And the problem with that whole sequence is there's not a lot of tension because she's what just, kind? Well, she's just theoretically <laughs> safe. Like, oh, yeah, they have tension. they have the romantic tension, wow, but she's wow, wow, wow. but she's safe from harm there, and that sure. kind of complicates the plot. It doesn't it it brings that momentum down, mm -hmm. right? Because she's also technically safe on tattooing. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do, Austin? Yeah. What do I, David? Do? What do I do? You got to get another <laughs> assassin. Who finds them on Naboo? Shoot, right. And in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> Anakin <laughs> cuts this guy down out of rage and anger. Mm -hmm. So you're already starting to pick up the pieces of yo. He's unstable, especially when it comes to Padme being right. in danger. And then you're cutting back and forth between this scene and Obi Wan arriving on Kamino. Mm -hmm. And the Kaminoans say, oh, we have clones. You know, would you would you like to see them? Right. What? Dun, 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 dun. Like, <laughs> mystery. The music's building. The suspension. The tensity is going higher I feel and it. higher and yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah. And then you know what happens? What? Anakin pulls off the mask of the assassin. It's <gasps> another one. And then cut to Obi-Wan looking at the entire army of clones. Yes. Of all looking like Django Fett, Tamora right. Morrison. Right. And then everybody in the audience is like, oh my gosh, it's the attack of the clones. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. It sure does. That's actually like awesome. I like that. <laughs> and then you have, you have multiple things going on because Anakin is the one who realizes, holy cow, it's clones who are coming after Padme. Mm-hmm. And then Obi-Wan is learning, holy cow, that clone who tried to kill Padme that I know of mm. is one of these nut jobs. And then the audience sees all of those clones and they're like, dude, it's the stormtroopers. It's the Empire. Bruh. And they get they just go crazy. And the Oscar nominations descend from heaven. George Lucas is riding a golden chariot. Dude. Across the red carpet. Take me back to 2000 where... 2002. Well, when they were writing it, I'm guessing it was 2000. And 11-year-old Sean they usually, Terry... They usually, took, they usually took three years to make those, I think. All right, so then 10-year-old Sean Terry was just ready to rip. Yep. And they weren't ready for you. I'm sorry, Sean. That's cool. Just cut to that... It's not your fault. Except clip. we know from the Clone <laughs> Wars show. <laughs> from Good Will Hunting. We know from the Clone Wars show that the clones are good. <laughs> and I, nice. Come on. And I'll take the show over that. Wow. <laughs> Dang. No, there's a, a, what is it called? The Lost Missions. It's like, yeah. It's like, it's a, like season six. A separate season from the Clone Wars like sure. actual show. And it's it actually dives into how Sifo Dyas the guy mm -hmm. who ordered the clones. It goes into that backstory. So that yeah. one's a little weird to me because they ended up retconning that, I think, because originally there was the Bounty Hunter video game where you played as Jango Fett. Yeah. Right. At the end of that, you know, Jango Fett goes through this long-winded mission to take down some, you know, very deadly target, which actually ended up being a Saj Ventress. Oh. So then they retconned her death because in the game she got killed by Jango. Oh, dang. And at the end, basically... Django had won the right to be the kind of progenitor, uh, the 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 uh, the dis, what do you call it? The ancestor of the, the clone army. Yeah, the donor basically. Yeah. Um, 
Count Dooku was just trying to sift through who was like the most powerful, deadliest, skilled warrior. Right. Mm-hmm. And so Which. they basically, through that game, cr- implied that sifo never had anything to do with the creation of the clones. It was all just a ruse by Count Dooku, which the movie made a little bit confusing. I kind of wish they had done that a little bit differently. Yeah. Speaking so. of retconning deaths, do you know what Jedi has died more times? Co- technically on screen, but not in canon. It's Shakti. Yeah, it's Shakti. Yeah. Yeah, because she's a. She's got two she's a scenes mess. in Revenge of the Sith where she gets killed once by General Grievous, once by Anakin in the Jedi Temple for Order 66. Neither of those made the cut for the movie, though. She was also killed in a Force Dream sequence that Yoda had in the Clone Wars animated series. Yeah. She was also killed <laughs> in Force Unleashed She's by. Like, uh, yeah, you kill her as. By Starkiller. Yeah, Star oh, Killer. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> But she still, there's no canon. Doesn't she die in that uh, 2D animation? Or no? The Yeah, Gendy Tartakovsky one. She might. I'm not sure. I don't remember. There's a big fight against Grievous, and yeah. I don't think anybody survives except, except Kayati Mundy. Oh. I think. But as far as canon goes, we still don't know for sure what happened to Shakti. Right. <laughs> She's like a teenager in a slasher fic. She loves to die. She sure does. Um, you said, you mentioned Django won the right to be the donor. Right. That leads me to another question. If it wasn't Django, who would you want to be the face of the clones? Kersantan. <laughs> I was going to say Gunji. <laughs> it's like the same thing. Uh, Not well, really. Well, in the game, actually, it was this other uh, It was this other bounty hunter guy. I don't remember his name, but he was actually voiced by the guy who voices... Mr. Krabs on SpongeBob. <laughs> so that's, you just, it was just listening to Mr. Krab chase Django around all day. Um, uh, besides that, I don't know, probably, uh, is Cad Bane still canon? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not, no, I'm sorry, not Cad Bane. Dengar. Yeah, Dengar. Who's the guy from the 2D, Gendy Tartakovsky one, who was like, underneath the armor, he was like just a bunch of weird, like, it plants. Like hold, held together. Oh, I don't remember. Dengar. No, it's not Dengar. What's his name? Dengar's the dude with like the head wrap. Yeah. I honestly don't know. Him. That's who I pick. Because he was in the old. Santan. He was in the old school Mandalorian armor. Dang. From like uh, the Kotor games, they had right. him in that armor. I wonder how old Kersant was, because Wookies can live for a long time. He's Dude, can like, you imagine? He's probably like sixteen, actually. Do you think the droids? Like that's why he was always so edge lord. Do you think the droids would have attack, uh, succeeded in their attack on the Wookiees? That Kayata Mundi was so concerned about. I hope so. You hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah, the cat. The that. That whole sequence was a little weird. Remember, you said David a few episodes ago that that sequence where Yoda <clears throat> uh, kills the General Gree, his commander, who tries to hit him with Order sixty six. He just doesn't oh, flip yeah. the beheads, yeah. two guys. Yeah. I remember seeing that in the theaters, and I remember the audience reaction to that was like a top 10 movie going moment. Like a cap catching Mjolnir? Yeah, similar. Not as intense, but just like you're seeing Order 66 play out, and boom, 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 it's going all over the galaxy. And then they show Yoda and Kashyyyk, and everybody's like, <gasps> and then when he cuts their heads off, it was just everybody was going berserk. That was a sweet moment. Yeah. My favorite part of that scene is like Chewbacca has the most unnecessary cameo in the world. <laughs> yeah. He like lumbers over like, oh, what's going on? Right. It's like Chewbacca, you, you're not even the biggest Wookiee here, dude. No. You look like a chump. He really is. He's, a he's like he's like skinny and lanky and the, the rest of them are like football Just players. Just ready to battle, no doubt. So. All right. So we never got to episode three. three. I, know, I was just going to say <laughs> well, we're, Revenge we're, of the Sith. We're on our way. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Which is which obviously is the, the Sith part. <laughs> takes over. <laughs> you know why it's called Revenge of the Sith, right? Because episode six was originally called Revenge of the Jedi. Mm, but Dang. Revenge is not the Jedi way. Revenge is not the Jedi way. Yeah, and they, they, they changed the name of the movie. Mm. Um, actually, I think just like a few, like a couple months before the film came out. It's like recall all these buttons, yeah, <laughs> and these posters. Good lord, <laughs> don't wear that T-shirt anymore. Get it back. 
Revenge of the Sith is basically a Jedi would never revenge, my dude. Is basically Order sixty six. Yeah, and and so uh, at this so point, three, Revenge of the Sith seemed all, right. All the good guys were in power, like the Jedi were in power, right? And this is where the Sith take over. Yeah, Palpatine takes over. There's multiple layers. Palpatine taking over Order sixty six. The Chosen One turning to the dark side and serving Palpatine. Right. Nobody triple, saw that coming. Triple threat, Revenge of the Sith. What's a new hope? Uh, Luke. Luke. But we also find out partially Leia, too. Yeah. Eventually. Um, and the plans listen, of the Death Star. If Rogue One is to believe, hope is that uh, little data drive she had. That's yeah, true. That's the plans hope. of the Death Star. It's got hope written all over it. Mm. And we got what? to see that weird CG Leia face. What is it, princess? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. See though, again, <laughs> if you see that scene before you see a new hope, you're like, what was that? Did your kids watch that scene? We haven't seen that one yet. What about uh the girl? My kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh no? yeah, she saw it. Did she also vomit? Vomit? What do you mean? Oh, to Leia's Yeah, it's really the the uncanny valley. No. It makes me sad because it, it's not even necessary in the in the movie. Sure. Yeah. Like, we, you don't even need to see her face. It's actually, it would work better if you just saw the the data drive she has in her hand. Like, the yeah. entire movie is about this object. Right. right. You don't need to, like, have the last frame of the film be her face. That's true. So I think that's a good opportunity. point. I saw a, uh, a meme about Vader. It was how Vader's always late to work. Did you see that one? Yeah. And it's like every moment in Star Wars ends with Vader like looking, just missing it. Like just in the nick of time misses it. <laughs> so like Kenobi getting away in the Kenobi show. In Rogue One, he's staring off into space as the rebels get away with the plans. Right. Yeah. It's like every time he, he's always just too late. Except in our next movie, yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Where he gets on Bespin before everybody And he's else. early. So he's, he's early. Waiting. <laughs> he's waiting at the dinner table. <laughs> You'd be honored if you could join us. Do you think he was waiting a while there? Yeah, 45 minutes. Like he'd finish all the appetizers and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to like take the mask off. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get caught eating. Don't let anybody see. That was actually the weird thing about Mando is he, he couldn't, like, to eat, he literally had to, like, take his helmet off. Right. And, like, I guess, like, hope nobody saw him. Yeah, because he like he's eating inside that shack, right? Looking the, out the window. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, nobody I thought, thought the same thing. Nobody thought that through. No, I think it's fine. So, what is the Empire striking back? Uh, so this is after the Death Star is blown up. Yeah, and this is them building the second one. Mm-hmm. And striking back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Again, they, multiple layers to it. Yeah, they show up on Hoth right well, away. It's a, it's a good it's a good chase film for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're kind of always, they're always uh, the bad guys are always kind of on their tail the whole film, right? Until they're on their front, yeah. In Bespin, Luke pretty good, t- pretty good, hand. pretty good tension. Yeah, maybe considered one of the best movies of all time Just to somebody at least. That that was going to be my question after this. What of all the movies? Let, let's In do the this. History of movies. Let's do this. Two questions. What's your favorite movie? In all nine films. Should we finish rounding out the meaning of all the movies first? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, you can't I, ask me to a- answer that question. It's, it's too, it's too intimidating. I, think, I don't even know all the movies all yet. All right, quick, go. Six, I, Return of the Jedi. Well, hold on. Empire Striking Wars Back. Movie. I think Empire Striking Back is them destroying the rebel base on Hoth. Because it's just like, boom, they're there, boom. Um, Revenge of the, or uh, Return of the Jedi is... Luke returning with his new lightsaber. Or no, Return no. of the Jedi is Anakin. Anakin at the end yeah, of turning. Yeah, turning back and killing Palpatine. And he dies. No, he didn't kill him. Somehow, <laughs> Palpatine's returned. <laughs> right. Uh, seven, Force you Awakens. You already have. David's Lies favorite seven. tear-jerking moment. Well, no, I don't think that's when the Force Awakened, because she had been doing stuff before that. Mm. Wait, did we miss something? But, no, Snow calls Kylo and he goes. I don't know, did we? <laughs> Wait, we're we're yes. going through the episode ones. We're not. Are we we're we not going to do <laughs> any of the. Like, yeah, we're just going to. We're finish. not going to do Rogue One or Solo because I no. feel like we could. Okay, all right, fair enough. <laughs> Solo is his last name. Boom. Okay. Rogue One. That's <laughs> it's the not name even of his last name. Rogue One is the name of the squadron. It's that not started. even his last name. They gave him that last name. They made oh, it yeah, up because he's Solo. Mm. I'm Ron Solo. <laughs> Dang. Jason Derulo. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay. January, February, March, <laughs> April, April, May. May Jason Derulo. Derulo. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> January, February, March, April, May, June. Jason Derulo. Actually, we missed June, and then it's Jason Derulo. Well, we're we're in June, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah, All right. We don't need to talk so about anyway. June. <laughs> Force Awakens. I think it's when she catches the lightsaber. No, that's when the Force is... I guess. Like, while you're sleeping, sometimes you, like, wake up and then go back to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) I guess this is when it fully awoke. She was flirting with the Force, and then... She hit snooze a couple times. Right. And then she awoke. Uh, But no, Snoke calls Kylo and says, there's been an awakening. Have you felt it? Yeah, I I think that movie... Yeah, but that's in eight. No, No, it was in in the trailer (laughs) for seven. I don't remember exactly when it is in the movie. It's probably a small part. Is it bad that I know way more about one through six than I ever will about seven, eight, nine? Well, to be fair, you had, as a child, you were more compelled to watch those movies over and over and over again. But as an adult, we don't. Like, I guarantee there's kids today who watch those movies on repeat, like, all day. Sure. That's fair. I'm one of them. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Yikes. Okay, so well, Force Jedi. Well, I was going to say The Force Awakens actually is a little bit of a missed opportunity because I get the impression in that film that it is um, about this kind of, hey, it's been 30 years since the fall of the Empire. All this bad stuff has gone down. Luke is like an exile, self-imposed exile. The bad guys are once again trampling all over the galaxy. And it's almost like out of nowhere, a deus ex machina, the force starts just touching people and mm-hmm. kind of like anointing people across the galaxy. So right. here's this random girl in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Yeah, and she <laughs> really gets, uh, she suddenly just can sense the force. Yeah. It makes more sense in The Last Jedi because then there's the broom kit, broom boy. And then, but then they they allude to the idea that Finn is also s- technically force sensitive. Yeah. So that was always the idea I got that there's just like a a revival of yeah. the force suddenly in the galaxy. They didn't really do that. They didn't. I feel like of all the movies, The Force Awakens do- fails to live up to its title the most. Yeah, sure. Number eight, The Last Jedi, is Luke obviously and- Kylo until <laughs> Luke is gone, and he tells Ray. And he yeah. says to Kylo, I am not the last Jedi. That's what it is, yeah. I will not be the last Jedi. He's talking about Rey. Is he, though? She has all the Jedi ancient texts. Mm. The sacred texts. The sacred texts. Sacred Jedi texts. <laughs> the way he says it. <laughs> My page turners, they were not. Oh, your page turners were they. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, read them have you you. well the the that was uh i think the premise of the film was kind of interesting like oh the last jedi Uh uh-oh what's about to happen to the jedi right are they going to do a deconstruction of what that means are they going to subvert the legacy of what it means to be a jedi are they going to have to rebirth and and transform into something new for the story and then at the end it's like uh, 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 uh almost (laughs) <laughs> and then it's like, well, the, raise, raise the Jedi. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to pass the baton to her, and I'm going to die uh, through exhaustion, like George Lucas almost did when he made A New Hope. Yeah, right. So we'll call back there. Nice. Really nice s- parallel. Yeah, <laughs> really nice <laughs> parallel going through the layers of, uh, of that allegory there. Uh, so then Rise of Skywalker, of course, our all favorite moment in all of Star Wars. Ray who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ray Skywalker. Skywalker. She is. There was uh, something I saw on the internet that was a little bit kind of was interesting about uh, from the Kenobi show where somebody pointed out the scene where uh, Leia basically says, uh, oh, I'm not even really an Organa. And then uh, Bale Organa says, no, you know, you're you're as much an Organa as anyone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of the adopted Mm. trope. And then simultaneously, they also showed in this meme uh, Owen Lars was Reva said something to him yeah. along the lines of like, "Yo, you you love him as if you he's love your him, own. Yeah, as if he's your own." And then he says like, "He is my own." Right? He's Joel Edgerton. 
<laughs> and uh, and it was like, oh, see, there's kind of like something powerful about that being adopted sure. into a family. Except Just sure, a wa- sure is a waste <laughs> the way they did it in Rise of Skywalker. She adopted herself into the family. There was no father figure moment of you are now family. She just kind of took it. Ask Wait, me what my name is. What's your name, Sean? Ray. Ray what? Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> that easy. Nice. It's that easy. That's <laughs> um, we talked about who's the chosen one. What's annoying is the Star Wars m- just saga is all about the chosen one, Anakin. And it's like he's in one through six. So the fact that they did not involve Anakin's force ghost at the end of episode nine in this face off of Palpatine somehow returned, they should have had, and there's a ton of fan edits out there that have Anakin's force ghost showing up to face Palpatine at the end. And uh, there was a lot of fan theories going into nine and after nine that said like, how do you write a story where Palpatine returns but Anakin doesn't because one through six is the munip, the manipulation, <laughs> manipulation, the municipality, municipality of Palpatine over Anakin. Somehow Palpatine returns, sure. but Anakin isn't the one to finish him off at the end. It's Ray who yeah. is not the chosen one. And what really makes me mad is in the beginning of the movie, she's struggling to even fight that trainer droid. I mean, we all struggle to fight the trainer joy during the tutorial mission. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. But, like, she can't even deflect the blaster shots when she's looking at it, yet she's able to defeat it. Doesn't she just, like, yeet Palpatine. her lightsaber at it at some point? She saw it ticked yeah. off. Okay. Yeah. Same. Well, no. she Doesn't she hit it with a stick? Because she's like... Yeah, she, she throws her lightsaber right. and yeah. then while it's distracted. She cuts down all the trees. Yeah. And all those squirrels get killed. Because she's better with her staff than she is with her lightsaber. Yet, somehow using two lightsabers. Why didn't they give staff. her a double-bladed lightsaber? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> here's, why, here's why they didn't end the movie like that. Because on the set, they had a laptop, <laughs> and they were rewriting... <laughs> parts of the script <sighs> while on the set and that ending had not been fully fleshed out, you know, seven months earlier. So getting Samuel Jackson, Hayden Christensen, all these different actors yeah, was not possible. Yeah. And so they had a voiceover and that's kind of just how they had to do that. It sucks. Hey man, that's, there's consequences. There's consequences for when things don't work out the way we want them to. Uh, that reminds me talking about Hayden Christensen or Christian Haydenson, whichever Christian one you Hayden want. Christian Haydenson, yeah. Um, <clears throat> one of the other. Evil alter ego. The eight, Earth 836 version or whatever. The, 616, I think. Well, what's the other one from Doctor Strange? No one cares. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other most debated thing on the internet is when they went in and changed Anakin's Force Ghost. So if you remember oh, the yeah. Force Ghost of old Anakin versus Hayden right. Christensen. Right. That's right. See, that ruins my watching it four, five, six, one, two, three. Because you get to six and you're like, who's that young guy standing next to Obi Wan? Oh my gosh. Right. It's oh, true. that's young Anakin. You haven't met him yet. Uh yeah, I wish they would have kept it the original. It is people should watch it. It in is the- too bad because even when I, when we were little and before they obviously did that, they had the uh I can't remember the actor's name, but they had that actor who played Darth Vader in like, you know, makeup. Yeah. Yeah. They had him as the force ghost at the end. Right. And it like, there was never any confusion. Yeah. Like, that's obviously Anakin. Right. Even when I was like, even when I was like six months old, <laughs> I knew, I knew that. An right. eight month old or eight year old infant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think they should have changed that. Plus Anakin becomes a force ghost after his redemption. It's like once he turns back as an adult, you take him back to young Anakin who slaughtered a bunch of younglings. Like, is that how it works? Like, No, it, he spent his whole adult life being evil. Right. So why not take him back to when he was good? Dang. Take well, me back. That's kind of the, that's kind of the debate know. then. Is but it after he, you return or is it but when he you didn't, were your best self? It's a little bit of a nitpick. He didn't disappear when he died, though, like Obi-Wan and Yoda. Right. Mm-hmm. He just kind of slumped over. <laughs> and then Luke's like desperately like, Father, don't leave me. Right. It's like, he's already gone, dude. <laughs> dude, he's, he's dead. Dude, he's dead. 
<laughs> Come on, Luke. <laughs> but he got the same burial that Qui Gon got. Oh my gosh, that's you're right. And ah, I see, FD. and then and Liam Neeson figured it out. But that's actually a topic of debate too, because people are upset. They are saying it breaks canon that Liam Neeson's Force Ghost body showed up. Qui Gon Jinn is the best Jedi there ever was, and ever will be. He can do whatever he wants. Dang. Because he's always just been a voice up to this point. Right. I mean, he shows up in Clone Wars. Right. But, but that does? was a dream sequence. Like as a that. ghost? He does. Yeah. That's actually a really good arc, Sean. I'm going to send you that one. I know. See, it sounds like it just ruins everything. Yeah. It's no. a very intense, like, deep into the Force mythology. They, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka travel to this super Force-sensitive planet. Mortis. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Dang. And Anakin, there's like the embodiment of the force there good mm-hmm. and bad why well, know why it's called mortis why because it comes from the word rigor mortis mm. which is describing the stiffening of the body after death shoot just like the story beats of star wars started stiffening <laughs> after the death caused by the clone wars retcons <laughs> that's what's going on there maybe okay uh <laughs> We're still on Rise of Skywalker, uh, right? No. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Qui-Gon, <laughs> uh, Qui-Gon, Liam Neeson, came out and said about showing up in Kenobi. Because yeah, remember, yeah. they asked him, are you going to be in Kenobi? I always right. just assume he forgot. He's really old. He is pretty old. He pulled an Andrew Garfield. He, uh, he came out and said, uh, I certainly didn't want anyone else playing Qui-Gon, and I wanted to show my respect to George Lucas Aww. and that mythical world that he created. Aww. Plus... Me and Ewan are pals. Yeah. And I loved working with him during the They're Phantom both Europeans. 25 years ago. Well, here's the funny thing I thought while watching the episode is they were asking uh, Liam Neeson, oh, do you make an appearance in the show? And, oh, I don't know what the... But the reason I thought that he probably didn't even have to lie is because his cameo is so short and so simple. He literally could have filmed it like... 48 hours before the episode came out and it yeah. would have probably still they would have been able to make it work the only yeah. thing i didn't like about his cameo was a it was too short i wish there would have been more but b yeah he needed a haircut he needed his beard trimmed i'm gonna put a picture he had, right a, fa- here. He had a fake beard okay but they it was it was straggly mm. it looked like not only have you been dead but your hair has been growing and there's no one in the force realm to give you a haircut. and if Dang. old anakin dies and returns to his young age how does qui-gon die Go into the force's body, and mm. then his hair keeps growing. They maybe when you him. maybe when you die, you return to the age that you are most comfortable with. Dang, dang. So, what age would you re- return to if you were to become a force ghost? That's a great question, Sean. Probably, I don't know. I haven't peaked yet. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be about uh, 48 minutes ago. Dang. When we started this podcast. <laughs> Took that much out of you? <laughs> <laughs> Back when I wasn't so evil. <laughs> Any other hot button topics we want to hit on before we close this out? Um, What's the most controversial thing on the internet currently surrounding Star Wars? I'll answer it. Ask me anything. Dang. Wait, I thought you were going to tell me. <laughs> 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 so my brain kind of shut off and waited for you. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. It's something super controversial in Star Wars. Um, I mean, it's got to be the weirdness of uh, Leia and Luke uh, kissing. Yeah. Right? There's, you know, there's some, on, there's some. <laughs> like Kanye says in that interview with Joe Rogan. <laughs> what? Think about it. He says, <laughs> the name of the main character in Star Wars, Luke. Who created it? George Lucas. Lucas. Luke. He is the main character in his story. <laughs> he kissed his sister. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's all he says. <laughs> that is, uh, that's an interesting take. Uh, well, I, I, I want to change my answer. I want to go back uh, 30 <laughs> seconds in my force goes to where I didn't hear that story. So uh, there, there is some controversy out there about... Um, whether or not Darth Vader was always going to be Luke Skywalker's father oh, when wow. the script, or at least when A New Hope came out. Now, I had somebody grind my gears about this on the internet. 
and tell me I was wrong, that it was not the plan when the movie came out and he made it up during Empire Strikes Back's script writing. Hmm. But I looked deep into this. That is not true. I'm so glad you did. Basically, the my understanding is that the writing of A New Hope, it was developed over several years because George Lucas kind of always had this idea in his head. Mm -hmm. When he started kind of getting into the the nuts and bolts of the scripts and the different drafts. Um, originally, things like Darth Vader and Luke's father were separate people. Luke's father was alive in the script originally, and Darth Vader had a different role. He was less of like the main antagonist, and he was just more of like a, a recurring villain kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But over time, the tension between Obi-Wan and D Darth Vader got so much mileage. Mm-hmm then you were like, okay, you've got to have these characters, they've got to have a history together. And then the idea of Obi-Wan having a history with Anakin Skywalker, Luke's father also got developed. And then finally, I think the major thing that happened in the script writing was eventually George Lucas loved the idea of putting Vader in that mask because uh, Ralph McQuarrie, the concept artist, designed this look for the villain. Mm -hmm. And so once Darth Vader was in a mask, it immediately prompts the question, who is he? Right. What's underneath the mask? And you basically give the audience a promise. Hey, you keep watching this film, you're going to find out who this guy is. Right. And my understanding is that it was around that time when the script was all getting finalized that George pretty much had it in his head. Okay. Vader is going to be Luke's father. He's the twisted, evil, mm -hmm. dark side version of him. Right. I'll reveal that later on. So this is this is going to be an archetypal, the 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 noble son versus the dark father kind of a thing. I misunderstood. I thought that because Darth Vader sounds like dark father because I think Vader is father in Swedish or something. In German, it's Vater. Yeah, Vita. so it turns out that's actually a coincidence, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I've, I always thought that that was like intentional, but it's not. However, it is not true that George didn't have the idea for this until after A New Hope came out. That's not true. Mm. This was part of the plan. Interesting. Meanwhile, <laughs> Leia and Luke totally made up for The Return of the Jedi. Dang. 100% made that up on the yeah. spot. Hey. You gotta do something, right? And then look at what they created out of it. They had to settle that. They had to settle that love triangle somehow. True, they just ignored it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Two notes. The what was it? R Ralph McQuarrie, the guy who did the concept art. Yeah. He, his original sketch for Vader's helmet. That is the design they used in the Rebel show. So right. the Rebel show, the animation the, looks the, like the exaggerated. Yeah, it details. looks different, and you see Vader, and you're like, "What the heck?" But that it's a. It's call a back. Yeah, it's a callback to the original. I sketch. do I do appreciate that about uh the Filoni. those yeah, those kind of cartoons is the style is intentionally dramatic and sure. I guess it works when you go from live action to the cartoon. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work the other way around. No. <laughs> People were very upset about Cad Bane, yeah. uh the fifth brother, the, the Grand Inquisitor, yeah, Ahsoka, you know, on and on Eden. it goes. Ahsoka, yeah, she looked yeah. Um, last note, talking about Empire Strikes Back. Do you know what the actor, David Prowse, said during the iconic scene of him and Luke? I do. Because nobody knew what the actual story was except for... Uh, George Lucas. Mark Ir Hamill. Irvin Kirshner, the director. Yeah. And, and then theoretically, James Earl Jones, once he was like literally sitting in the booth reading the right. line, like, but wait a minute, what? David, David Prowse, who recently passed away. Oh, RIP. no. So David Prowse is the guy in the Vader outfit. Yeah. In he's the a movie. big dude. He used to be a bodybuilder. Like, he's the guy who is physically Darth Vader. Um, he ticked off George Lucas because he did an interview with like a newspaper and he was given too much information about them shooting Empire Strikes Back. And George Lucas. Didn't trust him. I have something to say. He did have something to say. Wait. I have something to say. Oh, you have something to say. Wait. <laughs> Wait. This was an interview before Empire Strikes Back I or think after, after New Hope? After New Hope. Okay. Potentially during. I, I'd have to fact check myself on that. Potentially during the shooting or the beginning stages of the shooting of Empire Strikes Back. He was giving out too much info. Oh, and George Lucas sure. shut him down. And during the filming, he had 
David Prowse say to Luke, Obi-Wan killed your father. Right. Not, I am your father. Obi-Wan killed your father. No. No. That's so, impossible. <laughs> so everybody on like set <laughs> thought that Obi-Wan killed Luke's father. Only then to find out To this out day, later, some would argue he did. Oh, my Oh, my. Gosh. No. We just learned. No. Anakin himself said. Anakin I am not Anakin. your failure. <laughs> really, really sweet of Anakin to let Obi-Wan off the hook there at the, at the end there. Yeah. Hey, hey. It's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault, man. Yeah, he did. So, yeah, that's a cool Easter egg. So, anyway. Question for the peeps. What is your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> do you miss old Anakin? Do you like the new Anakin, young Anakin, Hayden Christensen, Force Ghost? What order did you watch Star Wars in? And what order would you watch it in? Would you rather have watched it right. in? Right. I got a question. Yeah. I have something to say. Uh, fact check me. <gasps> Tell me how I'm wrong. You won't. You can't, because I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And uh, who's editing this one? I can. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it all in. Just leave it all in. There's nothing I did wrong. Okay. I don't have to be apologetic for anything. I won't even put anything next to anything you're saying, because we know it's true. Unless you do find something, and then you can put that fun little, <laughs> Sean, Sean is, is wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So far, it's only been reserved for Dave, but. No, no there was one there for was me. There was one for Sean. Was there? Yeah. On our episode. episode. So anyway. Yeah, I mean, because I'm I'm so rarely wrong. It doesn't right. matter. All right. Episode 12, 99 Nerds. Glad to be here. Glad that we survived. I saw a video that said if you start a podcast and you make it past episode seven, seven. then you're basically just like goose headed to the moon because most die at seven. So we're here. We made it through Obi-Wan, and we're we've got so much still to talk about every single day, once a week. I mean, I could do this every hour. Every day, once a week. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Listen on Spotify, iTunes, Google, YouTube. Comment, like, subscribe. The algorithm demands it on all platforms. We're trying to grow our audience. We're trying to send this thing to the moon. We're trying to get Deborah Chow in-house. We're trying to get Dave Filoni to replace David. It's going to be a fun ride. Love you guys. Peace.